feel like we're at the we're playing the end of, the, of that awful Indiana Jones movie, the fourth one. <laughs> the Crystal Skull. Yeah, the Crystal Skull, where like the alien com comes to life and yeah, that like, was floats around. Horrendous. Like that's what we're that's what we're playing right now. We're playing a video game version, of that and we're not doing very well. <laughs> it gets a little messy when it turns into a studio. Right. Yeah. So we can toss that up there. Maybe move the alien. That's I'll good. take I'll take the oh, sure. I'll move it somewhere. I'll take the, uh, this is Aliens the video game. I got it for twenty. Aliens. Alien mm -hmm. um Aliens Colonial it. Marines. Oh, I heard actually, that game was terrible. It was kinda terrible, yeah. Yeah. In fact this there's a part in the game where you, you do this, you, mm -hmm. you're in the suit and you fight one of the aliens and it's so so annoying. It's so terrible. Right. It's just so poorly done. <laughs> And it's really hard to beat it because you're just like, it's just, I had to look it up because it was just so stupid. Oh really? Yeah. Just like roundabout. It was just terrible. Like the controls were awful. It was like the least exciting part of the game too. Oh really? Because just like the same three punches over and over again. Right. Until you kill the thing. I played Alien vs Predator not, back in the game computer, really? which was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Well, there's a new Aliens coming out. I forget Alien Isolation. I mean, that's supposed to be good. Yeah. yeah. New game, and I think they're actually making another like Prometheus type movie. Mm, Prometheus is terrible. Yeah, though. It was pretty. Bad. And it was so like it was so disappointing too, because it, like it didn't have to be bad. It didn't have to be bad. It wasn't. It, it was weird that they tried to um, pretend like it wasn't an alien prequel. There's just a lot of stuff that happens that's just never explained. Yeah. Bodybuilder. And why does the robot create, like, alien is the, or the robot substance and the guy's dress sex with the girl, and that, I don't, whatever, that was bizarre too. They're going through exploring the little, this is completely off topic from what we're supposed to be talking about, but it's just so frustrating and annoying. And before the robot cr helps create the alien, there's a statue of the, what, so uh, I thought he created, like, Nothing makes any sense. <laughs> Geologist who's terrified of ever sees like a, an alien snake, and you think this sn alien snake is. Cute. Uh, and then they turn them into space zombies. Scientists in the movie don't act like scientists. They act like idiots. Who Everyone have no acts like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, they have no consistent. They're just motivation. all idiots. That's the problem. <laughs> anyway, hi guys, Steve Gutowski here. Welcome to another episode of Games and Guns. I have Town Hall's Kevin Glass with me this time. Uh, and we're going to be playing a little bit of Metal Slug 3, which for me is like an arcade classic. I love this game, and I've loved it since, you know, I was playing it in like, I don't know, Pizza Place. Right, I, I used, used to, to play it in, I don't remember uh, which Metal, metal Slug Whatever, it was. This, it was the they're arcades, all the same. Though. I played it yeah. in the arcades. And this place yeah. just like it, so. Oh. So you recently... Oh, oh. oh I died. Oh, oh you died. <laughs> oh, run away. Shoot, shoot. Ah, shoot, he's got it. Bananas. Let's get in the submarine. Why don't you get in the submarine and I'll go up here? Yeah, how do I... Oh, I did it. In the submarine. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Oh. 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 Um. Oh, God. Oh, what in the world? It's hell in the electric field. That's good. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Uh, on the front page of Town Hall right now, you have a piece on uh, the export-import thing. Yes, I do. Right? Uh, why don't you uh, take us through... Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Oops. Oh. 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 Oh, get up. Go. Okay. Oh. Ah. Okay. Oh, God. So, basically, uh, Republicans yeah. have taken up the Exxon Bank as a... Um, Continue. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Export Import Bank. Republicans is, have taken okay. this up as kind of a. A way of explaining that Democrats under in the Obama administration have become a party of crony capitalists. Right. And, and why is the Export Import Bank an example of crony capitalism? Because I've been hearing a lot about this lately. But I don't think most people are aware of it. Sure. So the Exim Bank uh, is a way to kind of give favorable loans, trade trade protectionism, subsidies, things like that, um, to local American companies. Okay. A but lot of politicians to... like this because back in their districts, um, 
they have these companies. So I wrote a piece today on how uh, Patty Murray and Maria Cantwell, who are Democrat Senate Democrats from uh, Washington State, have been pushing this against basically the wishes of Republicans. So they they wrote a letter yesterday, uh, June seventh, saying that John Boehner needs to bring up the Exxon Bank in order to pass it and just pass it cleanly. Right. As far as like support and opposition to Exxon goes at the current moment, um, is it partisan or is it more like based on campaign contributions kind of thing? In your story, it was mainly what are these? What are these Right, let's get away from them. Oh god, that, that was good. But in your in your story, essentially, the the group calling for reauthorization of export import is are Democrats. Are, right in my and story, and they're complaining about uh, Boehner not not bringing it up for a vote yes. at this point. So that seems pretty straightforward. But this was specifically about uh, how it exists in Washington State. Right. And in Washington State, of course, uh, there's one of Boeing's, Boeing Manufacturing, mm -hmm. uh, their biggest uh, airline divisions. Um, and Maria Cantwell and Patty Murray, not coincidentally, are some of the biggest recipients of Boeing campaign money. Right. Now you could say that, to and be Boeing fair to them, that their constituents legitimately benefit from this. So in sure. Washington State, um, you know, well, Boeing supplies a ton of jobs right. to Washington State residents. It might be the case that cynically and kind of in a way that you can say they are benefiting their constituents over other Americans, uh, they are doing their yeah. jobs. Yeah, they're benefiting the constituents that actually work for Boeing. <laughs> Right, exactly. Who are <laughs> Washington State residents? Um, sure, but there's probably plenty of Washington State. The residents problem, that though, is that would benefit from not having. It's harder to make the case that you benefit without subsidies, right? We can just say, you know, uh, Boeing Airlines directly employs ten thousand. Uh, Americans, but uh, what you can't say is, oh well, our airplanes would actually be slightly cheaper if uh, we didn't employ those people. Right. You know, or if, if we, we weren't well, subsidizing. Yeah, if we didn't Boeing. give Boeing twelve, what was it, twelve billion dollars for that thing? There, yeah, in one year, probably the worst year recently, it was twelve thousand, uh, twelve, 12, billion, 12 dollar billion subsidy yeah. to Boeing. Which is an incredible amount of money to give to one company. Exactly. The counter argument to the XM Bank is that. Well, for one, we shouldn't just be uh, subsidizing these massive companies that clearly uh, ought to be able to compete Stand without the subsidies. Right. Right. I mean, Boeing is a massive company. It's not. It's not. It shouldn't need handouts. It's not a struggling startup, exactly. Yeah. Um, if, I, if anyone needs them, it, it certainly shouldn't be Boeing, and certainly their entire stock. Um, their entire standing, as measured by their stock price, shouldn't be based on the fact that they're getting subsidies from the government. If you get rid of that bank, that, that really hurts their bottom line, essentially. Which is which is really perverse uh, from a free market standpoint. Right? I mean, right, and I quoted in the story, this was from uh, Bloomberg a couple days ago, that uh, S&P, the credit rating company, said that uh, Boeing would be, their credit worthiness would be at stake if XM doesn't get reauthorized. Right. Which seems Which is really, absurd and perverse, right? Yeah. I mean, if you don't get this giant subsidy from the government, then you're not, then your business is in, in peril. Well, that means your business, you've got a lot of problems. Exactly. I mean, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be completely relying on government bureaucrats to, to keep your, your airplane company afloat. Exactly. But unfortunately, they do. Apparently, what do you think? Do you think this is going to ever see any real action? Do you think the export well, so import bank is really going to go away? Because that doesn't seem like it would be an answer, for you, even though it's become it's got a something lot, of an issue. It's got a lot of momentum right now, but I do want to make the case that it's not a partisan issue. You know, um, in both of those years that I mentioned that 
um, Maria Cantwell and Patty Murray were the top recipients of Boeing money. Mm -hmm. The number two recipient was a Republican. Right. Um, right, which is another reason why I don't think anything's really going to happen. Right. Like, conservatives are certainly, certainly uh, up in arms about export import for good reason, but. And Republicans are playing, paying lip service to that, I think, at least. But I mean, do we really think that that's going to lead to anything when, when Boeing is pouring all this money into uh, campaigns and they're the ones who benefit? So, uh, them and other ma major political donors uh, are the ones who benefit from export imports. So, what's really, is there anything really going to happen? Would be my I would say it's unlikely. Sure. Uh, just anecdotally to me, it seems like there is more momentum to repeal XM this time. But okay. a lot of conservative friendly groups like uh, the Chamber of Commerce are very heavy, heavily in favor of XM. A lot of the people that you might say are more interested in uh, the business than free markets, I, I suppose. We uh, yeah. uh, the ones that probably you're not going to find uh, lobbying against export import because that's the whole that's the whole thing yeah that's the whole point of the whole thing is to protect the big big corporations right so, um he had a piece up oh, he killed a giant crab robot tank nailed it crab robot tank dead do, do you think people really care about this uh I am a really bad uh I think comparison for the median American voter, so I sure. think Same that here. I think that it's hard for me to say personally um, exactly how much people do care about that. Oh, hold on, I died and come back as a zombie. People, Repeal of XM or, or allowing Uber to compete in a, in a free market is something that we should be for, um, but it's, I don't think we should expect it to drive a lot of votes. Um, big cities that are generally kind of. Um, we have a monkey helping us now. A monkey with a with an Uzi, a Mac 10, something along those lines. A baby monkey with a gun. Yes. He's not really doing anything now. <laughs> He's already died again. <laughs> I've died probably 50 times since we've been playing. Exactly. I think the average person is more concerned about living their life than about political ideology. So the best the best thing you can do is to find ways in which. Um, people's lives are impacted by <clears throat> either positively for what you believe in or negatively um, based on what you know, your opponent believes in and try to show that to people. This is how this really affects your life. So export-import is one where that's probably going to be really hard to do. Right. I think it's hard to show gonna, people how that impacts their life. Even um, though it does, I mean, I could, I could, cer I, I certainly believe it does, right? Oh yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Because it hurts, it hurts the market. It hurts innovation. Like, I mean, it hurts, it hurts people for sure because it, it hinders innovation and it props up companies that aren't, uh, that, that uh, wouldn't otherwise be doing as well. And that has an effect on, on a grand scale, on everyone, for sure. <laughs> a more, I think, concrete example and one that relates to uh, what we're doing here is we saw a couple years ago the state of Rhode Island heavily subsidize Kurt Schilling's video game company. Right. Um, and it failed. It Which was produced a terrible video game that nobody wanted. They produced a video game that nobody wanted. I didn't even know that they actually produced anything. I thought that it just went under. How much? He got millions and millions of dollars in subsidies. I think hundreds of millions. Yeah, like in an subsidies absurd from the amount. state of Rhode Island. To make a video game, and then what happened? <laughs> they, went, they went bankrupt. They never. Yeah. So we can say it. in that case uh, that you know just straight up they wasted a ton of money. Right. Right. They lost hundreds of millions of dollars on a project that never happened. Never did anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's harder to say. Let's say that Kurt Schilling's video game company had succeeded though. Right, like Boeing. It's right. It's still a waste of money, but it's harder to say, you know. It's harder to point out to people that that's. It's harder to say, you know, um, thir thirty-eight studios, which is the name of the video game company, right. you know, employs all these people in Rhode Island. Uh, they produce these video games. Uh, a lot of people think it's great, but um, 
what would happen if 38 Studios and these subsidies didn't exist would be that, uh, you know, other great video game companies would come along. We might have uh, younger upstarts that uh, right. aren't subsidized by taxpayers. Um, or what might happen is that foreign foreign video game companies would be more dominant. Okay. Okay. And people don't want to hear that. Right. What is this thing? What the heck are we fighting? I thought we were fighting zombies. Now we're fighting like weird fighting zombies, like ET zombies. Oh god. And, and they're like invincible. <laughs> we're just gonna die a dozen times before we do this. Yes, there we go. Dang it. Okay. Take some of them. Oh man. Die, you ugly zombie. Zombie air? I don't know. You got him. There. Yes. Oh god. Oh god. I got smushed to death by a model. You know, insert coin. What? I don't think there's a coin slot on my computer. Let me play. Well, it's up to you. You got it. You can do it. Avoid the monoliths and shoot the glowing thing. I don't know what that is. Man, this is too intense for metal stuff. This is what Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes! You did it! <laughs> One of us no survived. Yet. I ran out of quarters, apparently. Apparently, yeah. Part of the way through, it's just no more quarters. There's like some credits at the bottom. It says I still have one credit. Oh. Well. So. I guess. You, you win. I don't know. <laughs> that was that was weird. I guess I suck, apparently. Or the, or, <clears throat> I think when you when we started, you put in more more tokens. That must have been it. When we were. I found the coin slot. Yeah, you put on the your, tokens on your in. Computer. That's it. I, I only put in three and then I tried to do the old like string on a box. Exactly. Didn't and it buy, caught me. Didn't it caught buy. me in the end. So. Cheating doesn't pay, children. But anyway, thanks for coming on. Yeah, sure. That was fun. Uh, we appreciate we as in me. Cause in the royal we. The whole we. show is just me. The royal we. I edit, I upload, I promote. Uh, it's all. But I like to use we because it makes it seem like. It's a professional thing. What the it's camera like can't show is there's like a hundred yeah, people out there. Fifty people back there. Exactly. Hey guys, everyone say hi. Hello. You need a applause track <laughs> that you can trigger on the keyboard. I'll do it in editing. I'll do it in post. <laughs> do it in post. <laughs> but thanks for coming on. We it was good to talk about um, XM and why nobody cares. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we um, want people to care. It's just I would hard love for to people to care. care. I would exactly. love for people to care, but and most people are not going to care but that doesn't make it something that we shouldn't fight for anyway right exactly because we know we know that it's better to have freer markets not to subsidize big companies right and that's 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 what's at the core of this issue and that's that's what we should be fighting for even exactly. if people even if it doesn't if, even if people don't realize it, that it affects them in their daily lives. Yeah. So. And it's important to question your video games, where it they is. come from. That's right. If your video game studio is being subsidized. I don't want my, I don't want my uh, Metal Slug 3 to be right. subsidized by the government. And I don't know if there are companies. Uh, I think... I but, think every, when you're talking about the entertainment industry, everything's subsidized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that's a common thread throughout the entire entertainment industry, not just video games, but... It does. It certainly exists in, in the video game sphere. It's just like if you ever watch something like Archer or a lot of TV shows. At the end, they'll have the Archer has that made in Georgia. Made in Georgia, exactly. Because Georgia's giving them money to do that, mm -hmm. not because they just love Georgia. Uh, exactly. It happens everywhere. The, tax breaks. the TV show Veep is filmed in Baltimore because Baltimore gives them tons of. Uh, film tax right. credits that DC won't give them. This kind of thing is all over the entertainment industry. Right. Why why we need to give tax breaks to uh, 24 or Bethesda or any any entertainment property at all yeah. is beyond me. Yeah. Freer markets are a better thing. All right, well, thanks uh, for having yeah, me on. Thanks for coming on. And we'll hopefully have you on again soon. Sure, definitely. Hey, guys, thanks for watching this week. I actually uh, still have a couple copies of Broforce to give away. Uh, because not everybody claimed their copy last week, so there's three copies left. Make sure you subscribe to this channel before Sunday, um, or by Sunday, and you could win a free copy of Broforce. It's a $15 game. Uh, you get a Steam code. I, I'll, I send it to your YouTube uh, message, so make sure you check it. 
Um, <clears throat> but all you have to do is subscribe, and I'll pick three people at random, and they'll be the winners, and they'll get a free game. So make sure you subscribe, and uh, <clears throat> while you're here at the end card part of the, the video, why don't you check out uh, last week's episode that has us actually playing Broforce, uh, me and me and Dan Joseph, and we're funny and and uh, political and all the that nonsense. So uh, make sure you check that out by clicking, oh, you know, right right here, 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 wherever wherever I put this here. All right, thanks. Yeah, what are you doing? Awesome. You rescued the I guy. I just rescued him. Yeah, go back. You have, to, you have to physically touch oh, him. You do. Yeah, oh, it's like, like a, it's like a. You know, it's like it's like my Saturday nights. <laughs>